See how easy that was? Alright, let's start. Get down the same knee. Bring your left arm to your right shoulder. Right arm to your left shoulder. Breathe five times. Bring both arms out. Put them down. Try to get back up. Try this at home. Really? Come on. I'm going to have to try it out because I just think that's a lot of crock of old crap. Anyway, here we go. If, if I fall over, I'm going to hurt myself because there's no room on the boat. Get down on one knee. Stand up. Get down on one knee. Left arm on right shoulder. Right arm on left shoulder. Breathe five times. Arms out, arms by your side, stand up. Just as I thought, load of old crock. <sighs> Run the intro. Uh, I'm in Colin's boat and uh, he's got a big engine. I haven't. And he go, I, to, I thought it's quite interesting to have a look at what his procedure is um, for the start up of his engine. Anyway, over to Colin. Probably a good start to tell you what sort of engine it is. It is a Gardner. It's a three cylinder. It's a three LW. Um, I always wanted a Gardner, but I never thought I'd ever get one. Certainly never thought I'd get a three cylinder one. Um, so I'm just going to show you how easy they are to look after and how easy to run them. And um, main thing today, you'll see how we start it. So the main thing, first thing which I do is I make sure that I've already checked, have I got the exhaust on and the cap off the exhaust. So that's all been done. So then I have a checklist. So um, I've got the checklist in here, which I always go through. Um, it's always worthwhile doing that for, I think, for everything on a boat. Um, the checklist was put in there by the builder, which is um, Paul Barber, that's of the boat. And um, yeah, so I run through that. So basically I need to check the oil and the water. I've already checked the the exhaust, yep, that's the water, and then the oil. Look how easy it is to get to the oil check, lovely, and that is fine. So now I look at my checklist again, and I go main battery switch is on, it is, and then we, we look at the two ignition lights. So yeah, I'm just going to check that the the throttle's in the right position, which I normally leave it like that um, after I've finished using it. So, a couple of other things I need to do. There's a little button under here which just gives it a little bit more diesel for starting. And I will raise the pump. So I'm just raising some diesel so that it's got diesel to start off with. And um, check the list again. Prime the fuel pump, cold start button in, decompressor on, press the start button. So what we're going to do, the decompressor here, it doesn't need this, but it makes it easier for the engine. And I can spin it over and get oil pressure if I want to. So now I'm just going to press the starter button. And that's it. So now what I'm watching for is I'm watching for the oil pressure to go up. Exhaust nets. This is a wooden little 
piece of wood to tidy up the look of it. Coming along, today's a bit crafty, so I will shut the hatches on the side here and I'll let the engine warm go all the way up and I'll shut the doors behind me on the track uh, deck and I'll have all the warm air coming. quite interesting actually and made me realize how e well the advantages of that engine is that you can work at it from the inside of the boat I've got a little bit of faff to put this engine bay bit of wood bit of cover up faff factor now I my engine checks well I do an after use check um, so I always check the prop and the oils and all that sort of stuff when I stop and I should do it when I start but because I was filming Colin and we're going mine's so much easier to start with because all I do is turn this key Give me a radio. Hello, Colin. Hello, Colin. This is Chris. This is Chris. Radio check over. Over. I need to teach you VP voice procedure. Over. Roger out. <laughs> oh, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, he hasn't got it too bad. But uh, I can't not do correct VP. And I, you know, being a comms bloke, I couldn't, I can't just not do it properly. Just, just can't do it. Oh. So uh, this morning we're going to Napton Junction in that area ish. It's only a short hike. Um, not far to go, probably about an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Not really enough to charge the battery, um, but we're going to do small little hops, hop, skip, and a jump. Short stays, short cruises. It's enough to heat the water up. It's enough to put some charge in the batteries. Um, I know the sun is doing its business because I charge the battery up. Um, on Friday, today is Tuesday, and I've not needed to turn the engine over. Yes, it's got down to about 39%, um, but with today's sun, that would have boosted it to about 50. I reckon I could have lasted another day or two um, on what I've got, uh, and considering I don't really use the, the boat that much. Um, 
but the fridge and the freezer being household fridge and freezers do take on a little bit of electricity but there we go oh, they're rammed with food because we're in rural England now Oxfordshire oh, I think we're still in Northamptonshire but we're headed down the Oxford uh, well still Grand Union I think past past Napton is where the Oxford starts and those wanted to go to Warwick can turn right at, at uh, Napton Junction but we're heading straight down in slow time there we go I'll leave you with a bit of bow camp run the VT see much can you but over that side it's all very picturesque but I do note the towpath is a little wonky not good towpath walking never mind at least it's not raining regular thing this um, cooking malarkey uh, but I've never made a crumble the ingredients are apples because it's an apple crumble and crumble you see there there's apples there's some brown sugar there's a bit of butter cinnamon 
and I've had to buy a dish because I never had a dish and it's got a lid on it and things like that. So there we go. My um, oven thing is on at 160 and, um, and, and that's it. So four apples and then I sprinkle some of this cinnamon stuff, a, a teaspoon, two tea and two teaspoons of this brown sugar thing. Sprinkle it on and then we stir. Oh, look at this. The idea of this is for it to caramelize. Bit of lemon juice, couple of drips over the top. 110 grams, look at that, perfect. 110 grams of butter. 170 grams there, look, of flour. Brown sugar. So I've um, added a pinch of salt and I've um, put that, all that, all that clump, clumpy, this, I've mixed it by hand until it turns out looking like a clumpy bit of sand, like that. Right, I've added some rolled oats here, look. I'm just gonna mix them all in. Okay, once that's all compressed, put it in the oven for 100 for 160, 170, something like that, um, for 35 minutes. Look at that, done to perfection. Needed an extra five minutes, may have 40 minutes instead of 35, but other than that, it was pretty good. So um, it's all the proofs in the pudding now, as they say. First crumble I've ever made, and to be honest, it's okay. I think, could, what could I improve upon? Bit, it's a bit heavy, so I'm feeding it to the ducks. I mean, it was nice. It was just, it was just a bit heavy. I didn't need to eat for, well, I don't know, long time. Good. Well, I don't know. When did I have it? Mid afternoon. I didn't need anything to eat till the following afternoon following lunch and the ducks are lapping it up so clearly it was nice well I don't know where the ducks have gone I'm not sure if they've swum off or sunk wouldn't be surprised if they sunk to be honest certainly wouldn't be able to fly if they ate all of that gorgeous day isn't it look at that Oh, there you go. Like, are you all dressed up? I know. Well, I said I was going to dress up because I don't even get a chance to dress up over here. Oh, cool. That is a bit eccentric. Why? What? What I'm saying? No, you clown. What are you dre wearing? No, eccentric. Dicky, Dicky Bow? Yeah, I know. Don't tell me that's not eccentric. It's, well, I've got jeans on. I can make it like this. No, you can't. Don't. No, no, no. no. Okay. okay. Do you want your to grab then? Yeah, yeah. Where's your, t where's your bowl? Yeah. Oh, cool. Do you want it served? No, I'll serve it. Oh, good for you. Well, I'm going to serve mine then. What's this called? Cassoulet. And, and it can be everywhere. And it's all, really all it is, it's the end of the season for all your stored um, produce. Ow, oh, this is very nice, mate. This is looking good. Well, you haven't tasted it yet, I don't think. Well, I think it will satiate. Oops, us. Spring's here. Yes, it is. Today. Ah, you mean it's just here for one day, you reckon? Well, it's here for a few days now. I reckon so. Oh, that's all right. That works. Very nice. Mmm. 
How are you today? <laughs> oh, actually, I wish I'd known I'd have filmed it. <laughs> like your dicky boat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we don't get many opportunities to dress up, so I thought eating outside in March was probably just one of them. Spring's gone. It hasn't really started yet, but it's, it was nice to sit out there with Colin and um, just having a bit of an old man's chat. Um, different video this week because, um, well, sometimes life is is mundane on a boat. You just have to try and run with it and trying to make content which is exciting is very difficult when you're traveling at um, one or two miles an hour. It's just a relaxing lifestyle. And I think sometimes, you know, when I'm, people have complained that my, my channel is becoming a bit samey, a little bit mundane -y. well, do you know what, in the winter, it is. Make no bones about it. But then, so is a lot of people's lives. And I think, um, I think to do what any vlogger does, uh, particularly when you're on your own, it is hard work full stop well I find it hard anyway and if, if you think you can do a better job then come on the boat and show me how to do it um, so that aside thanks for watching thanks for liking thanks for subscribing those of you that are still subscribed and um, I hopefully I'll see you next week oh ciao puppy.